The Voice of Reason podcast, turning on the faucet of discourse. Hello, this is Benjamin Boyce, and welcome to one of the channels that I am now running into, or out of, I guess. I talk to people at length, and today's guest is Logan McCree, or Philip Tanzer, is two names, and he wouldn't say which one he prefers, so I give both of them now. So he responded to me about the interview, or the video that I did about Angela Merkel, on my YouTube channel, and Engel uh, Merkel said some things about uh, free speech or about restraining speech or moderating speech that I reacted to as an American, speaking from an American position, and I gave room for the fact that America isn't the only position regarding free speech. Now, I was very fortunate to receive not necessarily pushback, but feedback about the whole German situation, and Philip came on my channel and we spoke at length, not even about this, for the first hour we actually spoke about gender and sexuality and masculinity, and that's going to be fitting into my gender sexuality series that I've been doing. So that's not the one that I'm sharing with you now. The one that I'm sharing with you now, the portion of our conversation that I'm sharing with you now is where we speak about Germany and the political climate of Germany and some of the history around what's informing the political climate of Germany at this point in time. And now, of course, this is just one person. I feel like it's a very nuanced take that he has, but I'm sure that there's other positions, and I fully welcome other people to come and give us more information in the comments, or if you feel the need, reach out to me, and maybe we can set something up. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I'll move on from Germany into other situations, such as China or return back to Evergreen. I don't know. I like this whole globe-trotting thing. Anyhow, I'm getting out of the way. Here's Philip. I think that we are... Um heading like towards a cliff that and i don't know if the brakes are working at all anymore there is obviously a good movement people like jordan peterson the intellectual dark web uh, smart people and when i talk to people i have a shop and i have a lot of tourists coming in and i have conversations like we are having right now with so many people on a daily basis i would say with two people i have conversations at the same level as we are having right now and people people are good people are smart most people are are decent it's um it's very few that poison the well mm -hmm. but unfortunately that seems to be enough because we lost our ability to stop them and that's something there's something very specific about Germany and there's something very specific about America in Amer and the UK. In America, you have slavery. In Germany, we had the Third Reich and the Second World War, the Nazis. In the UK, they had imperialism and colonialism. Each one of our countries, we have a weak spot where they, they put where they put in shame. And of, we, of course, some of that shame is completely justified, but they that's where they start to destroy society. Where, that's where they start to question everything and take the immune system that every society should have. They take it away. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little history and to my life where I grew up in Germany and stuff like that, because that's quite important, just like certain things when you talk about America, for example, it's quite important which part of America you grew up in and what your experiences were, because obviously that informs how you, how you see the world, so to speak. So I'm going to try to run through that as fast as possible. So my father, he's originally from East Germany, so he actually jumped from a cruise ship in Norway to escape East Germany. And my mother, she's from West Germany, and they met in West Germany, and I was born in a small city in West Germany. And the my, my parents were wealthy enough. We had a nice house. Uh, my father was a dentist, so he did make quite a bit of money. So um, it was a very safe environment. 
And the city I grew up in was relatively homogenous, I would say. Um, but there was a Russian ghetto. So back then there were not a lot of uh, migrants from the Middle East or from Africa, but quite a few Russians and Italians. The Italians, they were very well integrated. They were working in the industries and they had restaurants and things like that. Uh, the Russians, for the most part, I think they did like in working in industries, so to speak, but there was clearly a Russian mafia thing going on as well. And and I heard about that a little bit when I was a kid, but it wasn't that big of a deal and you had you didn't feel it in the city. There was never a feeling of the city is not safe. Um because I had family in East Germany, we would go to East Germany at least twice a year and you can't imagine the cultural shock between West Germany and East Germany. It's literally as if you uh, watch a black and white movie compared to a colored movie. Everything was dull. Everything was gray because they used coal for heating. There were no, there was no advertisement. It was pretty much exactly how you um, imagine a communist country. <laughs> Very bland. And my grandparents, they were doing well. They were fairly rich because my grandfather, he was a dentist as well. And But there was this, this um, threat in the air that people would spy on you. It wasn't, it wasn't intense, but it was there. So they, my parents or my grandparents and my father, they would talk about that you had to be careful talking to certain people and things like that. Um, I grew, I, but I kept growing up in the West and, uh, I had no experiences with right leaning people. Everybody I would say was between mildly conservative and mildly liberal. Um, I went to the, I joined the military, even though I'm a devout pacifist and, uh, it was very easy in Germany not to go to the military service. You just had to do to say I'm a pacifist and for religious reasons I can't join. So I actually lied in order to get into the military because, as I said in the other video, I looked like Marilyn Manson or a mix between Marilyn Manson and Prince and I was gay and I did yoga every day. I'm a vegetarian. I didn't drink. I didn't smoke and so on. So I, I was everything that a normal soldier. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I was the opposite of a normal soldier. And I joined the military for two reasons. I wanted to see if they would try to break me. And I wanted to see if the military is as bad as I thought it was because I had a negative opinion as a pacifist I have had a negative opinion of the military and I don't like having prejudice so I went to the military and in the end I I ended up staying there for three years and it was some of the best time of my life and everything I know now about true tolerance and and how to interact with people I, I would say I learned in the military um, and what was very surprising, there were no right-leaning people in the military, even in the military. And it was very clear that I became a trainer in the military and we had to look out for Nazis or people with anti-democratic thoughts. And I encountered three in three years. Uh, one of them... He used to be a Nazi and he actually warned me that somebody else had those tendencies. Um, so that those were two. And then there was a trainer in the military and he had... He wasn't a Nazi. He clearly wasn't a Nazi, but he was a tra German traditionalist, I would say. And you just don't have that in Germany because we don't have tradition and we, we are not allowed to be proud of Germany at all. Um... After I was in the military, I moved to Dresden, which is in the east of Germany. 
and it's it's very very nice and the west is very capitalist but the east because they didn't have all these years with capitalism uh, they were i would say more down to earth more they appreciated certain things more and life is a little bit more was a bit simpler hmm. and for example a good example is if you try to hitchhike in the west you would stand for a long time if you try to hitchhike in the east somebody would immediately pick you up because people helped each other um but the east of germany doesn't have the same infrastructure as the west and is compared to the west poor and will always be relatively poor and that will never really change because they're 40 years behind in some ways also there are not as many big cities as in the west and that I'm, i'll get back to that later on in dresden there is not a lot of diversity or overall in the east except of berlin there is not a lot of diversity in people so it's almost exclusively white people or that's how it used to be uh, because it was communist germany and the only people that were there were uh, Koreans and a couple of uh, black people, but they I think they came a bit later. And the, the minority groups that were in Dresden, they integrated very well. They, and, and, and there was a feeling of, oh, we, we work well together, even though they had their own culture. Like, for example, and Turkish people came over and started opening restaurants, and they would only hire Turkish people. But when I, as a German, walked in, I didn't feel a barrier between us. Mm, and I would say Dresden was a very safe place. There were there were Nazis in the outskirts of Dresden in the Dresden is, is a richer city but in the outskirts of uh, Dresden there is quite a bit of unemployment and it's quite rural and there is a specific area where people tend to be very conservative patriotic and I would say there are real Nazis or neo-Nazis in that area can we, can, yes in America, we use that term whenever somebody disagrees with us. Could you define, <laughs> like, what constitutes an actual Nazi? So, um, I would say... Uh, xenophobic hate, to the... Hate, to the xenopho yeah, point xenopho of, xen ha of yeah. hatred and violence. Yes, yes, exactly. So, um, potentially... Uh, denying the Holocaust uh, or agreeing with the Holocaust, um, being xenophobic, being open to violence. Uh, that mixes a little bit with hooligans, I would say, in some parts. And mm. not all the Nazis there, I would say, are Nazis because they really believe in it. But my father and I, we lived for just for a couple of months in one area outside of Berlin and in my neighborhood there were quite a few Nazis and the girl next door she was hang she hung out with the Nazis and I asked her so why are you hanging out with the Nazis and she said because I don't like techno and I'm like what and she was like well there are two groups here in this small village it's the kids that like techno and the kids that don't like techno and they're Nazis <laughs> so, so, <laughs> And and okay. I and I talk and and I talked to the Nazis and they they were nice guys. I mean, they were obviously like their ideology was insane, but they didn't know a lot about their ideology. It was really just okay. young people in a gang, so to speak. Okay. And and when I moved to Dresden in public transport, every once in a while, and honestly, like you would see a Nazi, maybe. Once a month, you would see a Nazi, and you could identify them by their clothes. <clears throat> and if I would see a Nazi in public transport, I would walk over and uh, and say, uh, "Can I can I sit here?" And because of my tattoos and because of my short hair, they couldn't. 
they didn't know if I was on their side or not. And they would assume that I was on their side. And I would always start the communication or the the interaction with saying, uh, look, because of the clothes you're wearing, I assume that you really, really like Germany a lot. Um, I'm not on the right, but I'm not on the left either. But I'm really interested in where people are coming from, like their in their opinions. And then I had... And, and I really mean this. I had wonderful conversations where I agreed, disagreed, disavowed. And at one point in the conversation, I would always tell them that I was gay because I had to I had to tell them that their presence is a real danger to me, a real threat. And usually they would go, you're not gay. You're, you don't act gay. <laughs> and then I, mm. and then. I would say, well, see, you're a real danger to me. And he was like, oh, but you're a nice guy. And I would say, but you wouldn't know that. If you would see me walking down the street holding hands with my partner, you might say something. You might spit on the street. Worst case scenario, you hit me or friends of yours kill me. And by having these conversations, I tried to to instill just – a little bit of doubt in their worldview and saying, well, it's not black and white. And there are a lot of things that I, where I had to agree with them, where I said, yes, there are a lot of criminal non-Germans, but that doesn't mean that all non-Germans are criminal. And you have to ask, why are they criminal? Is it because they can't get a job? Is it because they are ripped out of their culture? Maybe they need to be integrated better. So I had these conversations. And believe it or not, usually at the end of these conversations, the Nazis gave me a fucking hug. <laughs> um, a gay guy. And they wished me all the best. And I still have these conversations when, I, when I'm over in Germany. So... I stayed in Dresden for quite a while. And Dresden has a very liberal heart. So there's an area that is super liberal where uh, Antifa, there quite a strong Antifa presence, not super violent, but you obviously also have the black, the black block um, and where all the artists, all the gays are and stuff like that. But in the outskirts, it's more conservative. I moved to Scotland to a small village. And from that point on, I only heard about politics in Germany from the outside, from from Scotland, which is interesting. And what year was that <clears throat> that you moved? Um, that was 2012. Okay. That was 2012. And I, in 2014, the immigration crisis in Europe really started. And because of the Syrian war and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, Angela Merkel, our chancellor, Angela. she Angela, yeah, <laughs> she had a very, very Christian approach. She is the leader of the Demo uh, uh, Christian Democratic Party. And she's from East Germany. And I really and I, I really like her. I think she's a good person. And I think for the most part she was a good politician at heart. I I know Sargon of Akkad will strongly disagree with me and a lot of people will strongly disagree with me because of the outcome, because of what happened and I understand their reasoning, but as a person I think she is she was good. And she really tried to represent all people in Germany, people on the left, people on the conservative side, which obviously meant that her position was sometimes vague and, and that she changed her position because she she listened to people, which I think is, a, for the most part, a positive attribute. Mm -hmm. But when the immigration crisis came, she said something live on TV. She said... Wir schaffen das. We will. Um, we'll make it. We'll like like. Uh, we will succeed in integrate in helping everybody in 
in letting everybody in and giving giving everybody an opportunity. She opened Europe, and she said, Who, "Who's in trouble is welcome," kind of. And all of a sudden, everybody started to come to Europe. Not just people from war zones, but also economic immigrants and they heard that when you throw away your passport and they can't identify where you're from you can just say oh i'm from a war zone and it made it incredibly difficult to send people away and they were uh, sent into uh, i don't want to use the word camps <laughs> but into mm. areas where where they were welcomed and then we had to deal with them and it was thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and it just would not stop and Angela Merkel she did the right thing in helping people but she did the wrong thing in not having a very very clear and structured approach that also incorporates sending people away if we can't help them or if they come from the wrong place <clears throat> and I would say that there are there is a femininity to like a feminine way of leading a country and a masculine way of leading a country uh, both of them in their extreme are bad um, I think that Angela Merkel for the most part was pretty much in the middle but the decision to help everybody was more a feminine decision and at this moment we would have needed somebody who said, okay, but we need structure. And that was lacking. So <clears throat> the doors were open and people heard about like all these foreigners coming into the country and people in Dresden and in East Eastern um, Germany that had no experience with foreigners uh, reacted with fear. And people started to go on the street, organized by an organization called PEGIDA, which uh, is an acronym for Patriotic Europeans Against the Islamization of the Occid uh, Occident. Hmm. <clears throat> At that time, I was... I was in Scotland, so I heard about this in the, in the news feed. And it was like thousands of people going on the street. And I was like, oh, my God, what's happening? And in the media, it was like thousands of Nazis on the streets of Dresden. And from the first moment when I heard that, I was like, yeah, that's not that that can't be true. We don't have these masses of, of, of Nazis, first of all. And I immediately my immediate thought was these are just. There, there will be a couple of mark, Nazis amongst them, but that those will just be normal working class um, people that are afraid and people that felt ignored by the politicians, by the establishment. Because Angela Merkel and the politicians, what they should have done is they should have gone to all the communities and said, okay, we need we need to help people. How can we do that together? Can every single village, for example, take in two families instead of sending hundreds and thousands of people to to the cities? <clears throat> and hmm. I'm, I'm saying that as if that was an easy task. I have no idea if that would have worked. I'm well aware of that. And I'm not judging our politicians too harsh. They made huge mistakes, but I wasn't in their position. <clears throat> So they were immediately called Nazis and everybody who was on these marches was being called right-winged and Nazis. And you know exactly what I'm talking about because that's happening in America, that's happening everywhere. And when you said earlier, everybody you disagree with is a Nazi now, um, that's exactly how it started in Germany as well. To understand that, I have to go back in history for a second. We had Nazi Germany. After we were defeated, all Germanness was destroyed. The <laughs> only area in Germany that is still proud of their regional um, traditions is Bavaria, with their Lederhosen and their Oktoberfest and all of that. And 
I would argue that immigration works better in Bavaria because they have an identity. And I, when I go over to America, you have so many different nationalities in America. But firstly, they're all Americans. Because America has such a strong, and to us Europeans, the American patriotism is insane. Best country in the world. We're like, oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> but 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 there is something beautiful about it. The more you question yourself, if you if if you if you're so proud of yourself, you are immune to attacks in some ways. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit arrogant as well, and you do make mistakes, but you have an immune system. Germany, because we have you you can't be proud of being German unless it's the World Cup. Then you can be proud of being German, but only then. You don't have the German flag out only when it's the World Cup. If you have the German flag on your window, you're right-winged. You're borderline Nazi. Hmm. And uh, this, this feeling of, of, of not knowing who we are and, and of being suspicious of any kind of national pride and identi national identity even, um, that makes Germany incredibly vulnerable to, I'm, I'm going to say, attacks from the outside, but I wouldn't even say, some people say it's intentional attacks. I don't have an opinion on that. But if other cultures come into Germany... We can't expect them to adopt our German lifestyle because we don't have a German lifestyle. We don't have an identity. We can't say it's absolutely fine for you to be Turkish, but you are German and Turkish. Not Turkish and then German, German and Turkish. But for the most part, they're Turkish mm -hmm. in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. And Pegida, it was the first uproar of the immune system of the country so to speak the first time that that the body of germany started to say something's going wrong and we need to do something and that has never happened before in this magnitude and the rest of germany started freaking out because they were used to immigrants and in quite a few cities that worked quite well in other cities it didn't work well but overall it was fine so they couldn't understand what happened in east germany in dresden and they're like oh there are nazis everywhere in dresden mm -hmm. and instead of the politicians going over there and actually talking to the people from begida and say yes there are issues because there were issues real issues with crime rates going up, rapes and stuff like that. Stuff happened. Um, instead of talking to the people, they ignored them and they called them Nazis. And what do you do if you don't listen to people and you call them Nazis? You push them further and further outside of society. And you actually, yeah, you, you push them in, into this corner. At the same time, a party started to rise. The name of the party is AFD. Alternative, Alternative für Deutschland, Alternative for Germany. And they started in, I think, 2015. And they were a Eurosceptical party mm -hmm. of intellectuals, for the most part, as mm -hmm. far as I know. Um, but because they were Eurosceptical, they were immediately attacked for being right-winged, which, as far as I know, they weren't. And they were called far right and Nazis. And what happened was the intellectuals started leaving the party because they didn't want to be associated with being called Nazis. And Nazis, or, or not, sorry, not Nazis, but right leaning people and anti immigration people and Eurosceptics entered the party and it turned into a populist party. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in, within this party, there are streams that are 
euro critical and migration critical but there are also i would say alt right aspects of the party it's very difficult for me to say what the percentages are i would say there are issues within the party but it's not a f the party itself is not far right because otherwise it would be banned we are um uh, anti-democratic far-right parties are uh, forbidden in germany uh, so you, there's a part of the political spectrum that's um, forbidden forbidden but yeah. that doesn't mean that those people don't exist so you have those people there but they don't have representation exactly exactly and the thing is we did have far-right parties before and they were always immediately attacked as being nazis and destroyed mm -hmm. Uh, and it's difficult for me to say which ones of them deserve to be destroyed, which ones didn't deserve to be destroyed. Or deserve to be destroyed, obviously, is a very tricky thing, because in my opinion, the only parties that deserve to be taken out are the ones that uh, vocally advocate for violence. Everything else should should be allowed, but highly criticized, obviously, um, or and challenged. But that's exactly the problem. People have no representation. And if people don't have representation, they go into the underground. Now they have a party that is as far right as you legally can get. And I'm pretty Jeez. sure that a lot of the Nazis go into this party and the party tries to deal with that saying, OK, stay here, but don't do your Nazi shit. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it became more and more obvious that Angela Merkel really screwed up the situation or dropped the ball, dropped the ball. And the, we couldn't deal with the mass immigration. And there were a couple of incidents, for example, in Cologne, in the city of Cologne, in New Year's Eve 2015. There was a big square and apparently 2,000 men assaulted one, uh, sexually assaulted 1,200 women. Yes, in one night at one place and nobody could do anything because they all covered each other. Um, I th I would assume these numbers are blown out of proportion. Uh, and But something happened. And a very patriarchal, people from a very patriarchal society where the lines of sexuality are very, very clear, restricted. We're coming to a country where, especially in New Year's Eve, alcohol and all of that, where women were dressed very open. And this is not victim blaming at all, but um, I'm pretty sure a lot of horrible stuff was happening that night and women being sexually harassed that Definitely has happened. No question about that. Uh, if the num what the numbers were, I really don't know, and it doesn't matter. But it became a huge story, and hmm. up to this point, sorry, up to this point, I have a lot of friends that are in the police, and because I have friends in the police in Germany, I know that the statistics about crime that is committed by not Germans, it's ridiculously high ridiculously high in cities but the police is not allowed to talk about it and the statistics are not being published the media cannot talk about it and i can completely understand that because you don't want to um fuel hate Be because like there are a lot of immigrants that really needed help they are were refugees and they tried to survive and these people need protection and I don't want Germans to hate them. But if you hear how many <clears throat> crimes are committed by the ones that don't appreciate the hate, the hate will spread onto innocent people. Like, like you were saying about the, the antibody, like the, the hate yeah. as an antibody or, or at least rage as an antibody yes. to protect one's yes, body. Exactly. Politic. Yeah. yeah. And so I can understand that the media doesn't report it. I can understand the the politicians downplay the issues. But at one point, everybody sees the elephant in the room. And if nobody speaks about it, who will win? 
the far right. Because they, and that's fun fact, Pegida, from the very start, they they had a phrase, Lügenpresse, lying press, yeah. fake news. Yeah. It's, it's the same everywhere. It's exactly the same thing. And that was before Trump. And because the press did lie about them, so they started with the lying press thing, and the press continued lying, so they had proof that they were right. And even if they weren't right with everything or with many things, there was the doubt in society grew bigger and bigger, and everybody started to mistrust the media, mistrust the the establishment, the mainstream politicians. <clears throat> So more and more people that used to vote for the conservative party, which for a long time hasn't been conservative anymore. They're economically conservative, but socially liberal. And they took away the place from the liberal party. So the liberal party is almost non-existent. So now we have like the Green Party and the left-leaning party, then the conservative party, which is also liberal, and then we have in Bavaria one party that is conservative, but that's only Bavaria. And we have the AFD. And the AFD takes in all the voters from the conservative party now because they're, the voters are sick and tired of the conservative party not protecting the country. Which means I think now the AFD is the third strongest party in Germany. And in some areas, I think they're the, even the second strongest or strongest party. And it's a real danger because there are streams in this party that are far right. Mm -hmm. And Germany is Why still is it a danger? Because, um, because it's not conservatism. It's not the... I want a strong conservative middle because conservative is protective like conservatism usually protects the structure and then you need a strong liberal aspect that pushes the limits and says we need more freedom but at the moment um, the structures are very social very social very liberal and hmm. and because and nobody's of our protecting history, the structure Nobody pr can protect the structure because as soon as somebody, if even conservatives are being called Nazis, if, if you question immigration and people say, oh, you question immigration, therefore you are a Nazi, uh, nobody can, people can't build a strong middle which you need to protect society. So pe people are moving more to the right because that's the only thing they can do. And because there is a stronger and stronger right, people, people in the middle left are becoming more and more afraid of the right in parts for good reasons. So they're moving more and more to the left. So you have this, mm. this, this, push to the right and push to the left. And at, at what point will society just break in the middle because there is nobody to actually filter the correct things from the far right and the correct things from the far left, pick them up and say, we have to bring them into the mainstream. And I think if Brexit happens, there will be no further push towards the right. And people can relax again and say, okay, let's meet in the middle and talk about our local issues. So I'm, I live in, in Scotland and we are obviously struggling with Brexit at the moment. And, uh, well, in the UK. Yeah. And I'm pro-Brexit because I'm pro-democracy. And I think if Brexit happens, Brexit was a populist movement, a national movement. And I think if Brexit happens, the populist voices and the national tendencies feel being heard and mm. they were able to express their opinion and then everybody can meet in the middle and reach out their hands and say okay let's 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 talk to each other 
I wish something like that would happen in Germany. I wish something like that would happen in France, in uh, Sweden, in Belgium, because the same things that happening in Germany happen in all middle European countries. Mm, if there isn't a, I hope I tr I use the right word like a cataclysmic event that lets off steam, where mm. where people on the right feel represented, so they can say okay, where where the conservative people can separate themselves from the right people from the far right because at the moment they kind of have to work together because like there is no other way if they can disavow them if they can say no 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 we actually don't want anything to do with the far right and you're a little bit too extreme uh we want to go back to the conservative middle that that would save europe i don't know how that's going to happen it's the it's that it's that virus that you're talking about. You you brought up earlier that America has slavery, um, Germany has the World War II or the Third Reich, uh, Britain has uh, colonialism. Colon There's all yeah. these these weak spots that are being attacked or exploited, um, exploited whether yeah. intentionally or, or not intentionally to, to very, disrupt. Very intentionally, very intentionally, I would say. For for what for what end like a globalist end or for yeah and and for good reasons well first of all all three of these things third reich colonialism and slavery obviously were well colonial I'm gonna take colonialism out of that a little bit slavery and the third reich obviously were predominantly bad things um, colonialism had a lot of very bad aspects. Um, and there is plenty to be deeply ashamed of, but that should not, that's not the whole history of our countries. That's not our identity. And I think America, actually, I think America was doing much better in the 80s and 90s and even 2000s where the black and white community were much closer and there were, was not that much of a racial divide. And this is really coming back now. Am I correct to say that? Um, the, it depends on how you read it. I don't think things have ever been perfect, but we were no, not, getting to a place where at least the dialogue around these issues was not as fraught as it all of a sudden is over the last five years uh, with the concepts of uh, privilege and uh, the whole set of postmodern social justice. Um, <clears throat> that whole ideology comes in um, and it tried to, tries to fix the past by re-importing oppression uh, just to reverse it. And then yeah. at the same time, they say there's no such thing as this reverse oppression. It's impossible because of their theories on power. Obviously, we in Germany, we had that the whole time because we paid reparations to the Jewish community. And I, I don't know to which other communities we paid reparation. Definitely the Jewish community till today, till today. And that's another thing. Um, and we... We started talking about that because of Angela Merkel and the free speech thing, and I'm going to go into that now. F speech in Germany was never free. Uh, you could never criticize Israel, for example, even if it was simply the politics of a country. We were not able to criticize it. It wasn't. You wouldn't go to prison for it, but you became a pariah. Um, you, you, it was. You could not do it. And there is a book, I haven't read it, but apparently there's a book writ, uh, written by a German uh, or a Jew living in Germany. And I think it's called The Nazi Makers. And it's about exactly that. And his thesis, as far as I know, as again, I didn't read it. As far as I know, his thesis is that the fact that Germans were not allowed to criticize anything Jewish anything is that had to do with Israel and obviously there were there was criticism of Israel but because it wasn't allowed to be expressed in public that actually in, reinforced and created anti-semitism in Germany because there's no release valve of, other than it, the worst well, and no dis, and no discussion you couldn't openly express your opinion and obviously if you're being oppressed the whole time if your opinion is oppressed um, it 
you get angry or you build resentment and instead of building resentment against the government that keeps you from expressing this opinion uh, it's quite likely that your resentment goes towards the group that you're not allowed to criticize i think there will be a re-emergence in homophobia i think that there will be a re-emergence of hatred to towards a lot of minority groups because we're not allowed to say anything against them. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm terrified about that. I don't want the, that to happen. The, the other problem with that is that the people who aren't, um, who would stand against uh, hatred um, because they're not in discussion with the people who are experiencing, you know, criticism or want to criticize because that, that discussion isn't happening. The people who have the hatred, let's say, get more and more stronger in their hate. And the people who don't have the hatred lose their ability to actually figure out how to how to talk with those people and, and to like yes. to de-escalate the, 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 the muscle of de-escalation within the society atrophies. Ab absolutely. And at the moment in Germany, it's absolutely insane. Everybody who votes for the AFD is called a Nazi. My uncle, who is a very, 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 very smart person. Well, he's very left leaning, but he's a very smart person. Um, I had fights with him on Facebook because I, def I had to defend AFD voters because they were my my uncle didn't engage with or he didn't call them all nazis but he retweeted certain things or people in his threats um said and this is what they said they said there is no hope for afd voters they know what they're voting for the only thing that works is put them into prison or re-educate them in camps that is terrifying. Hmm. These are people that vote for a democratic party. It's not a Nazi party. There are tendencies that I find too right-leaning. It's a democratic party. This is terrifying. There is a German singer. I'm going to send you the name later. It's, he is called Herbert Grönemeyer. And he had... He performed in Austria a couple, and the same thing is happening in Austria. And he performed a couple of weeks in Austria, and he had held a speech towards the masses. And he started the speech with, It's the same happening here in Austria that is happening in Germany. The right is taken over, and I tell you, we can't give them an inch, not an inch. And if they don't understand that, we have to dictate what they think. Hmm. And he said that in a vitriol, like Goebbels, like Hitler. And the same day memes came out where his speech was put onto photos from the third reich and yeah. it's 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 identical yeah it's, and everybody was cheering him on yeah it's it's getting insane and i i i just don't know what we can do about it and mm. when angela merkel now we're going to angela merkel's speech because that's how we actually got in in contact um i'm going to repeat angela merkel's speech we have freedom of expression in our country. For all those who claim that they can no longer express their opinion, I say this to them. If you express a pronounced opinion, you must live with the fact that you will be contradicted. Express, uh, expressing an opinion does not come at zero cost. I completely agree with that. No problem with that. The problem is that what's happening in Germany is that people that express an opinion are being slandered. That, that has two problems. First of all, if you call somebody a Nazi, the conversation is over because you're not supposed to talk to Nazis. I, I'm very happy to talk to Nazis, but our society doesn't want to talk to na Nazis. So it's not just them being contradicted. It is them being silenced, especially in the media. 
The next problem is if you call everybody a Nazi, then the word Nazi doesn't mean anything anymore. And when they're when you see real Nazis, they actually go undetected now because everybody's a Nazi. So who cares if, if we call somebody a Nazi? And that's the real danger. Now, here comes the second part of her comment, of Angela Merkel's comment. But freedom of expression has its limits. Those limits begin where hatred is spread. They begin where the dignity of other people is violated. The House will and must oppose extreme speech. Otherwise, our society will no longer be the free society that it was. Now, as a German, I understand this because we never had freedom of expression. Hmm. We were never allowed to express hateful opinions. And I actually, ch after we were chatting, I checked the legal situation in Germany and there is a law against insults and slander. So you're legally not allowed to insult a person. It's not a crime, but it's something like a civil whatever. Um, and on the one hand, I appreciate that because that's how, how I grew up. And I know it's not cool to call somebody a faggot or something like that. And if somebody does do that, I can call the police and the police will mediate and the police will say, na, 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 not allowed to do that. And they will record it and stuff like that. And I called the police because I was in, uh, insulted by two Nazis once. And it was a wonderful experience because the police did come and I didn't want the police to do anything. I just said, um, I want an apology and they apologized and we shook hands and the police thanked me for dealing with it in such a peaceful way. So I actually do think that mediation by the mm -hmm. police can be a positive aspect. Okay, mediation. Yeah. I. But where is the line? Um, and what is an insult? Um, because in the UK here, we have the hate crime laws and you can call anything an insult now. And, and you are well aware of all the, um, the fake hate crimes in the U S that were reported like Jussie Smollett and all of that. And there is a lot of that going on here as well. And like, Things that are really nothing are taken out of context and the police has to report everything that is reported as a hate incident, not a hate crime, because for it to be a crime, it needs to be a criminal offense, meaning an assault or something like that. If it's just speech, it's a hate incident, as far as I know. <laughs> but even if nothing was proven, even if it was... I, get, I think even if it was proven that it was not hate related or that nothing happened, it is still being counted as a hate incident. So the numbers are just going up, 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 up. So every year they can say hate is on the rise because the hate incidents are on the rise. Well, the hate incidents are predominantly on the rise because the laws are being stricter. But I do, but I do think that hate is on the rise because of everything is moving more towards the left and to the right. So if we see it online, yeah. we see it everywhere. There is more anger, there is more hate yeah. growing. But restricting so, speech is not the way. Yeah. So I guess in the context of Germany, the the context of Angela Merkel mm -hmm. um, and her. It's debatable about whether she, whether or not she said it, 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 we will never be the free society that we were. Or we will we'll lose our connection with freedom. What is the real content of that? Is that a tool? Is she speaking to a existent tool of political suppression? And does that need to be lifted? Do, does does Germany need more speech? Does it need less control? Uh, of yes. That? They, they, we need more speech. Um, 
I'm not sure if we need more speech, but people that speak need to be heard. Okay. Um, and the slandering of people. Yes, and the slandering of people that are that question certain things. The the fact that they are being called Nazis that needs to stop. And the the thing is, that's illegal as well because that's slander. That's an insult. So realistically, all these people that call democratic people Nazis, they sh they could be sued. But nobody really has an interest in that because they're the bad guys. Hmm. And hmm. I think that Angela Merkel is, for very good reasons, terrified of Germany moving further to the right. And I think it's a realistic fear. I think the whole of Europe will move towards the right. And I just hope that we can stop before it gets out of control. Um, and what's and the step so, towards that? Uh, I'll get back to that. The thing is, she's so terrified of the right. And I think she, my, I would assume they try everything they can to make the AFD illegal. If you make the hate crime laws or if you have make the laws around around anti-immigration views, for example, if you say that being anti-immigration is being anti-democratic, if you would say that, then they could ban this party. And they would say, ha, we got rid of them. There will be no... Uh, rise of the right in our country but obviously it would have the opposite effect mm -hmm. people would just become more and more extreme mm -hmm. um, I I understand where she's coming from she, I think she's acting out of fear out of a real realistic fear but the step towards the, the only thing that can prevent Europe to go down yeah to 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 go down with the ship is hmm. uh, having a very very honest and very uncomfortable conversation um, how badly we fucked up over the last 50 years since the first immigrants came to Germany and we failed to integrate them because we only wanted them as working force and they were not supposed to stay they were supposed to leave but they stayed and we were too politically correct to say if you want to live in this country you need to learn the the language so the the man they learned a little bit of german because they were working but the women didn't learn german because they were at home and so you have people in their 70s that have been lived here for 40 years that barely speak german or not at all and it created ghettos. Um, yeah, so it's it's a very, very long time of failed immigration, failed integration. And I think what we need now is a new chancellor, hopefully, of the Democrat, like the Conservative Party, who is as far conservative, but with compassion, um, as possible in, in this part, not as far as possible, but, but really conservative. And he, he says, we have to be honest about the issues that we're facing and we need that in every country in Europe. Um, that would be the only way in, in some ways we need Donald Trump's, uh, but I, I'm not a fan of Donald Trump. I think he's a buffoon. Uh, I'm glad that you have Trump and not Hillary Clinton. And I think he's the president that you need right now, but I wish you had an aus outspoken and and radical well he's actually not that radical but an outspoken president like that but a little bit nicer <laughs> you know <laughs> i hope i hope you have a little a, a little bit of a better understanding of where germany and where europe is at the moment no, this was uh, this is exactly what I needed because uh, I, 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 I poked my finger into something that had a whole bunch of complexity and I was just trying to make one point, but that was construed as me pretending to know more than I, I did. And I well, didn't you want did, to claim that. 
Well, you very clearly said, like you pointed out that you in America have a different position because you have guaranteed free speech. And that's exactly it. That's where some differences are. Um, the, the int I find the interesting thing is that all the Western countries seem to be struggling with the exact same issues. Um, it, it's the same everywhere. And the countries that seem to be safe are Eastern European countries, Poland, mm -hmm. Czech Republic, and so on. They seem to be relatively safe, especially Poland and Hungary, because they're very, they're quite national and right-leaning. And it seems like the Southern European countries are also a little bit safer. And I don't know how safe they are, but I think they, they are a bit safer, especially in the rural areas, because they, I think because of um, Catholic, uh, Catholicism. Do you call it Catholic, Catholicism? Yeah. Catholic. yeah. Catholic. Um, because of religion and traditions, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. But I'm not 100% mm -hmm. sure. That's a whole, whole other huge discussion about that. How do you, how do you maintain a, a conservative, a link to tradition? But I got to go, Philip. So Can we talk again? <laughs> if you want to, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay.